with a pro wrestling legend in a tough financial situation and more. This is Wrestling Hub. My name is John and you're watching the Wrestling Report for April 8th. Before we get into the rest of the video, make sure you subscribe to Wrestling Hub and turn on all notifications to stay up to date with everything in the world of pro wrestling. Also, don't forget to follow us on Instagram at Wrestling Hub Official and also follow us on Twitter at Wrestling underscore Hub. When it comes to WWE calling up NXT stars to the main roster, the Wrestling Observer would note that many names are under consideration. Braun Breaker along with Gable Steveson are being looked at as the guys who will debut and get these superstar pushes. Raquel Gonzalez has been talked about being moved to the main roster since January, and her injury angle and then losing the women's tag title so quickly may mean her days in NXT were short. The other names we've heard from early in the year being talked about for the main roster were Ellie Knight, because he looks and talks like a WWE. WWE star. Making his way from AEW back to WWE, Cody Rhodes returned at WrestleMania 38 to defeat Seth Rollins. On Raw this week, Rhodes would make his intentions to become world champion known. While he was set to appear on SmackDown tonight, it seems those plans have been changed with PW Insider noting, reported yesterday that Cody Rhodes was slated for tonight's SmackDown taping, also likely for a dark match. This morning, we were told that is no longer the plan and Rhodes is not expected for the taping. Despite Cody Rhodes leaving All Elite Wrestling, AEW President Tony Khan said on the Barstool Wrestling Podcast that there are no hard feelings between them. It is honestly one of those things, you know, we just were unable to reach an agreement on going forward, and I think he has found a situation which is good for him. And we are in a great position right now. There is no ill will. Either way, we are still good friends, and I wish him the best, and I think he wishes us the best publicly and privately, so it's all good. With him now the undisputed champion in WWE, Roman Reigns is apparently going to be making appearances on Raw and SmackDown. As Dave Meltzer noted on Wrestling Observer Radio, Reigns is supposed to announce his next direction on tonight's SmackDown show from Milwaukee. In theory, this means until they inevitably create a new major title that Reigns will appear on both Raw and SmackDown for the time being. With Lesnar and Reigns wrecking almost everyone in the build-up, there are few viable challengers out there. With the real number of tickets sold during WrestleMania 38 revealed, the Wrestling Observer Newsletter said WWE announced the expected inflated numbers, not that the real number wasn't impressive. They ended up opening up for 66,859, and they were going to fill that as much as they could, although there were scattered singles. Night 1 had 65,719 tickets distributed, and Night 2 had 65,653. Of those, 5,500 minimum were comps, and there was going to be at an event like like this, more late comps, plus for both shows, they had to move fans who had tickets down to fill with 1,100 plus unsold expensive seats. The paid attendance will eventually come out and would likely be between 57,000 and 60,000 each night. So the exaggeration was standard, as when they were in Santa Clara and announced 76,976, the paid was actually just below 60,000 according to WWE's eventual KPI listings. The last time at AT&T Stadium, WWE announced 101,700 163. The actual turnstile count of those who went in the stadium, both paid and free tickets, was 80,709. WrestleMania generally gives away about 7,000 tickets, although that figure varies a little by the year. And the turnstile count doesn't include people who buy tickets and end up not going, so actual tickets distributed will be a higher figure than the number of actual customers in the building by a little. After returning to WWE and winning the Women's Royal Rumble, Ronda Rousey would ultimately come up short during her SmackDown Women's title match against Charlotte Flair at WrestleMania. Despite Ronda forcing Charlotte to tap, the referee did not see it, as the reason behind Flair's win was revealed by The Observer. Charlotte Flair beat Ronda Rousey to keep the SmackDown title after a ref bump. The idea is for this to be a long-term program, and thus the belief was Flair had to win the first match, even if Flair got the better of Rousey as well in the angles leading up to it. One thing that looks obvious is that Rousey is not going to be over and have the meaning she did when she first came.
While he would not be able to defeat Johnny Knoxville at WrestleMania, Sami Zayn took to Twitter recently to reveal how proud he is of that match. My WrestleMania match against Johnny Knoxville is one of my all-time favorites. Definitely one of the matches I'm most proud of. I've had a lot of great matches in my career. I'd put this up with any of them. Anyone who saw this match will remember it. That's as good as it gets. On his new Strictly Business podcast, Eric Bischoff talked about AEW, saying the president of the company is thin-skinned when it comes to criticism. I'm a fan of AEW. I'm excited about AEW. I want them to succeed. I see a lot of great things. I said that long before our little dust up. You know, Conrad and I, we talk about Dynamite on 83 Weeks Podcast, and I would point out the things I enjoy about AEW more than the WWF. But at the same time, if I'm asked a question, I'm going to be honest in my critique of that. But it's not meant to be a shot. It just gets interpreted as that, and I think Tony's a little thin-skinned, and he took it a little hard. Last month, Big E would be on the receiving end of a suplex, which led to him fracturing vertebrae in his neck. He would end up not needing surgery, as his New Day stablemate Xavier Woods spoke on the Bart Winkler show, revealing Big E got lucky with his injury. Unfortunately, as you know, he is dealing with a broken neck right now, which we're just honestly just happy that he's alive, you know? Happy that he didn't break anything, and it isn't worse like it could be, so he's going to be okay in the next couple of months. Very, very lucky for that. Former WWE star Tammy Sitch, known on screen as Sonny, was recently involved in a three-car accident. The driver of the vehicle hit by Sonny, identified as Julian LaFrancis Lasetta Jr. of Daytona Beach Shores, would be transported to Halifax Health Medical, where he was pronounced dead. According to TMZ Sports, police officers stated they believe Sonny was under the influence of alcohol at the time of the accident. With the Ormond Beach PD investigating this matter, we could be getting the toxicology results in the coming days. With a reveal by announcer Tony Schiavone that an AEW streaming service would likely be launching towards the end of the year, New Japan's official Twitter announced that AEW Dynamite and Rampage will stream on NJPW World at no additional charge, with a Japanese live version planned. AEW President Tony Khan would react to this post, writing, We did it. Sticking with the AEW president, Tony Khan would take to Twitter today to reveal that most of those online hating on AEW are paid bots. An independent study has confirmed that much of the staunch anti-AEW online community aren't real individuals. It's a staff running thousands of accounts plus an army of bots to signal boost them. Look closely, these aren't real people. Who'd pay for such a wildly expensive thing? Of course, this would cause many to react. I want to say this account has been hacked, but nah, I could see Tony putting this out there. TK can't stop taking dubs. This is exactly what I mean when I say Tony Khan toes the line between fandom and ownership. His fandom wins out so much that sometimes he forgets he's an owner. I like Tony and appreciate what he's done for the wrestling business, but if this were Vince or Dixie, they'd be mocked. Would it cost less than paying two well-known wrestling journalists to endlessly promote your product while sh** on anything the competition does? What about all the accounts that attack fans when they critique the smallest thing? Are those bot pro AEW accounts? Who is running those Tony? Actually, Tony, it's called criticism and people are allowed to give that or have different opinions on things in the world nobody is a bot or whatever when giving an opinion regardless of if it's good or bad. Brian Alvarez of Wrestling Observer Live would say that Tony Khan commissioned an actual study. It was noted that Khan owns an analytics company. In the end, it was stated that it was a legit commissioned study, and they did tell him that they discovered this. My understanding is that he's not just going to do a bunch of tweets. There's more to come. Pro wrestling legend Abdullah the Butcher is supposedly in an undesirable financial situation as pro wrestling referee Danny Lincoln revealed on Talk is Jericho that an independent star claimed he caught hepatitis C from Abdullah. In 2007, a guy named Devin Nicholson, apparently he claimed that Abby contracted Devin with hepatitis C in a cage match, down in, I believe it was in Alberta. But nobody knew about it, because Devin said he never felt him cut him, right? When I first met Abby in 2008, and we were sharing a locker room, it was me, Abby, Honest John, and Devin. And Devin said, do you want me or Abby to cut you tonight? I'm like, okay. 
okay, he goes, if I was you, I'd let Abby cut you. He's been doing it for 50 years. I trust him. He's got all his stuff. The butcher's assistant, Malika, then went on to note that he does not know how to read or write, which has been a struggle throughout his life. For years, when all of us would go out to eat, I would ask him, what is that that you want on the menu? I would give him the menu, and each time he would say, I want what you want, or whoever was with us, I want what you want. I would say, no, eat what you want. But he always just said, get what you want. I think it was his pride. He didn't want to tell me. One day when we finally got home, he sat me down and said with tears in his eyes, I don't read or write. Abdul would lose that case against the Independent Star, which was apparently due to him not understanding the letters that had been sent to him. He is now living paycheck to paycheck with no money in the bank. They just don't know this. He is living from day to day. He's on a fixed income. He doesn't have any money in the bank. His wife owns all of his properties, except for this house that he lives in right now, which is both of their names. His wife came here from Japan. She didn't have anything. All of these properties he owns is from the career he built, and he has nothing but this house, which is in both of their names. He doesn't even have a car. With Nash Carter being accused of abuse by his wife, he would be released from WWE, reportedly due to a photo of him looking like Hitler. Brian Alvarez on Wrestling Observer Live explained why the company put the tag belts on MSK despite the allegations. What I was told is that the reason that they won the tag team titles this weekend, even though the allegations were out there, the reason that happened was because it was not believed that Kimberly was reliable. That was what I was told. They did not believe her story. NXT, I don't know what kind of investigations they do. I don't know what happened. Whatever happened, they determined that she was not credible. That's why they put the tag team titles on MSK. And this was your pro wrestling news update. I hope you're all having a great day. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you later.